morning. Welcome. It may be afternoon or evening where you are because of course, this is an international seminar and we are so glad to have you with us. Welcome to the Lean Innovation Educators Summit. It's December 16th, 2020. And we have a community of people gathered together on behalf of all my co-hosts. I wanna welcome you on behalf of Steve Blank, Pete Newell, Steve Weinstein, and myself, Jerry Engel. Today, we have a large community of over a thousand folks potentially gathering. And so we have to follow a few rules of the road. One, please keep your microphone muted while you're not speaking. Please use the chat function to engage with us. It's gonna be actively monitored by Emily McMahon and she'll be raising the issues with all of us uh, from the chat. If you're having tech issues, please reach out to Nicole Liddell, who will monitor also the email communication. Thank you also to our organizers, the Global Consortium for Entrepreneurship Centers, VentureWell. Both of these organizations were great in helping us get the word out. And of course, to the Common Mission Project which is our administrative backbone and really enables us to put on the seminar. Also, thanks to those of you that have volunteered and stepped up to chair our breakout rooms. It's going to be a key part of our program to engage with each other and have peer-to-peer -peer learnings. And all these breakout room leaders are gonna report back to us on the key points developed during their sessions. So, why are we here? Who is here? And what are we doing today? We're here to continue the learning that we've been doing in now our third session. So we had the first one last December, then the second one in the summer, and now this is our third. The theme from the first was, hey, let's build this community. And we laid a good foundation. The theme for the second was converting to online, you know, from the distress and displacement caused by COVID-19. How could we as educators learn to convert our experiential learning methodology to an engaged online method that would continue to have this in-depth and invigorating learning experience? And we had the second theme of creating equal access to opportunity in response to the Black Lives Matter movement. I think we've succeeded in both these dimensions and are making progress. There's a long way to go, but we're making progress in going online. Most of us have mastered it. And we see throughout the curriculum that we get to see uh, casually and formally, a lot of attention being paid to diversity and inclusion. So what are our themes for this session? Moving forward, we want to examine not just how we teach, but also how are opportunities changing for the teams we're teaching? How has COVID-19 and other you know, economic shocks shifted the opportunity platform, shifted the opportunity canvas? And are there things we should be doing to help our students succeed in the new normal? Are there new uh, pain points? Are there new specific crucial pivot points that we need to help them pay attention to? And we wanna look at this through two lenses, not just through the high tech, high potential lens, which is sort of a natural for all of us, but also through the main street lens. This, this theme of build back better, we really wanna focus on helping our teams be important to their communities and helping them build resilient, robust communities as we go forward with this new environment that has been disrupted by COVID and may be suffering risk of future shocks that we can't currently anticipate. So who's here with us to explore these themes? Well, we have over a thousand registrants 
from over 220 institutions and 65 countries. Really very diverse and very broad reach. And we're looking forward to learning from all of you. So what's the agenda? This morning, we're gonna be listening. And then this afternoon, we're gonna be sharing. When I say this morning and this afternoon, I mean in the two segments of the program. I don't know what time of day it is where you are. But in the first segment of the program, we're gonna be hearing from you know, the, uh, the leaders, if you will, not just the leaders of this program and coordinated co-hosts of this program, but from educational leaders like Lee Bollinger, the president of Columbia University. Then we'll be hearing from a panel of outside financing experts, a panel of venture capitalists who will, and, and government funders who will tell us how they see the environment shifting and how they've modified their strategies and their approaches in response to the disruption. Then we're gonna to shift to our peer-to-peer -peer learning in breakout groups. We hope that we're gonna be able to keep the breakout groups to no larger than 20 persons per group. We think we'll be able to achieve that. Some of the breakout groups are going to have themes, like there's a special breakout group for hacking for oceans and hacking for recovery. And those have been pre-registered, I believe. And other breakout groups will be more eclectic and respond to whatever are the critical points that the discussants in the room want to focus on. So again, we're gonna drive down deeply on how to build back better, how we can best help our students succeed in the new economy. Whether their dreams are high tech or Main Street, how can we as educators help them to build resiliency, to build the ability for impact and to strive and achieve the outcomes that they hope for. So why is this so important right now? You know, when I thought about it, it almost came across to me as like the tale of two cities, right? It's the best of times and the worst of times. We're seeing not only this initial job loss, but we're seeing this re residual job loss in the low wage worker segment of our economy. That we have really almost a permanent displacement right now. While in the face of that, we still have the stock market driven by the tech stocks, you know, going to all time records. Now, how can this make sense? You look at early stage financings, and it's still up and to the right, whether you're looking at deal size or valuations or number of transactions, we're seeing strong, robust, resilient capacity of the tech investing community you know, to participate aggressively and continually in hardly a skip a beat with COVID-19. And how does that make sense when we have you know, other trends in the baseline economy that are much weaker? We look at the S&P 500 as an indicator of you know, where has the economy uh, positioned itself overall. And we see that companies with the largest market caps are fundamentally technology companies. And when you look at the makeup of those technology companies, you know, they're being joined by you know, this huge um, wide open influx of new IPOs. The IPO window is just incredible just this week with the DoorDash and Airbnb offerings. And if you look at the balance sheets of the S&P 500, you see that they're increasingly dominated by intangible versus tangible assets. The intangible assets, which are representative oftentimes of technology investments. So tech is touching everything. In the face of that, we have bad news from Main Street. We have unemployment, we have business failures, we have shutdowns and perhaps permanent shifts in business models. The real economy is in crisis. Fiscal response to that, fiscal stimulus, has been of limited effectiveness. We've put money in the hands of people to keep them uh, being able to put food on the table and perhaps 
you know, avoid uh, you know, total economic disruption, but that money isn't necessarily percolating down to the um, you know, middle market companies, to the main street companies that we need to look to for everyday goods and services. So in mapping you know, the potential of this crisis, one way to look at it is home loss. You know, currently 17 million Americans are not current on their rent or their mortgage. And experts have predicted that 33% of that 17 million face foreclosure or eviction in the next two months. So even though we're looking ahead to a vaccine, the economic damage is still rolling through the economy. So we need to build robust teams that can weather these economic shocks. So how can we best help our students? How can we best help them build resiliency for impact and good outcomes? So with that, I'd like to turn to Steve. Steve Blank, would you share with everybody your point of view on how we should be moving forward? Thank you very much.